How you doing everybody? Welcome back to that car vlog channel. If you don't already know, I'm Andy and I've got something a bit special for you today that a lot of people probably have never heard of. This is a 1993 Chevy Beretta GTZ and I gotta say it's the first time I've ever heard of this thing. So definitely gonna check this thing out today, see what it's all about. I've got some information for you on it. Um, hopefully I can remember it all and uh, I'm gonna check out a car that's probably pretty cool. So from 87 to 96, Chevy, Chevrolet produced this Beretta Coupe, if you will. Well, not if you will, it's a Coupe. Um, and you know, they were okay looking cars, not exactly fast, really could, wouldn't even consider them cool, really. But as Chevy will do from time to time, they decided to make it cool. From 90 to 93, they made the GTZ performance variant of this car. This particular example is a 93 model. I gotta say, uh, like I said, I've never seen this thing before. I'm interested to check it out. Now, how I came to get this car in a video is actually kind of funny. Um, several weeks back, actually back in April of this year, I was at a Cars and Coffee in Knoxville, and I just ran across this thing, included it in a less than 30 seconds clip in the video, and uh, the owner, Brian, he uh, saw it, <laughs> which is kind of funny for a channel my size, and uh, said, hey, you wanna come check it out? So absolutely, so definitely. Um, to check this thing out now this thing is not perfectly stock um there are some modifications to it but uh it's close enough it definitely looks mostly stock let's start this tour shall we now, let's get a walk around to the beretta real quick to begin this gtz now these are not the stock wheels um your beretta gtz actually came with its own wheel that was actually color matched to the body of the car so it would have had elements of the wheel that were this actually i think it was the whole wheel that was the exact same body color. Over here is your, it's a two-door coupe. And the interesting thing about these Berettas is they had this handle in the uh, door pillar and it pulls kind of like a beer tap. So you just pull down on it and it opens the door up. Now, since it has to have a pillar here, you don't have a fully open area where you can just jump right in. You just have to pull the seat forward. But still, it's kind of interesting design that General Motors is using on a few products during the time. I think it was also on a Grand Prix for a while as well. Um, Coming around back, it's still, it just looks like a Beretta, really. You just have some nice tinted taillights. It adds a good look, especially with this blue color. But you really wouldn't know you're looking at anything special until you look down here and you've got this GTZ badge sticker on the bumper and this uh, dual exhaust tips, which I don't know if those are stock or not, but still looks good. It's actually a good looking car for 1993. And this one is actually in really good shape. The headlights are still looking great. Nice and clear, I imagine being a nearly 30 year old car those probably aren't stock but uh it's, it's a good looking car let's jump on the inside and see what it looks like there pulling our beer tap door handles which is uh really cool so first of all sitting here in these bolstered seats that were only available in gtz and up the gtz the indy and things like that version of these berettas it's kind of cool they got some decent bolstering in them uh they are fabric they do have this interesting uh we come down here this interesting inflatable lumbar um bulb here which uh owner tells me doesn't work all that well but still kind of neat to see these are six-way manually adjustable with a series of levers on the front of the seat and the sides coming across during the door handle your gtz obviously came standard with a gtz badge on the door of course you got some neat materials it's kind of a material to match the carpets um, and then a little bit of fabric up here. Otherwise, most of this interior is just Beretta. Um, interesting here, you've got your headlight controls that are mounted on the side of the dash on this little rotary deal here. Um, here, this is your actual gauge and uh, dash light dimmer. Here's your fog light switch. I think you have to you turn that off or back on. Um, that actually makes your climate fence a little lower than in most cars, which is kind of interesting. Uh, GTZ also came factory with a leather wrapped steering wheel and a full gauge cluster. Lower models would have had a bit less than this. I don't think they would have had a tack. Um, we imagine it probably only had a speedometer, temp gauge, and fuel gauge, you know, just the essentials. But this gets your full complement of gauges, everything you need to know about how the car is performing. Coming over here to the passenger side of the dash, and we have another rotary knob type control. This is your windshield wipers let's zoom in on that real quick you see the different settings right here show up in this little window and it's actually the same way the headlight switch works it has this little window here that shows you what setting you're on high low delay this window is just an indicator to tell you you know pointing at this window pretty much 
Here's your defroster switch right here. And this is actually your delay. So when you have them on intermittent, this is how you control the time delay for the wipers. Very interesting, very cool. Um, he does have this dash mat on top. Keep this dash nice and protected from the sun because you know, these Berettas are, or these GTZ Berettas are kind of special. So you definitely want to protect it. Pull this out and we have, oh, looks like cup holders. I'm not gonna to pull too hard, but they definitely feel like cup holders. Probably not the best in the world, but they are there. Interesting that the passenger gets two vents side by side. Most, most cars don't have that. Down below, we do have a very non-factory um, Pioneer head unit down here. Obviously, this these big screens were not a thing in 93. And we do have our climate control inside, right down there. Coming down from the climate controls, you do have a button to pop your trunk. Here's our manual transmission lever. It is a five-speed manual. Now these could be optioned with a four-speed automatic, but only under a certain condition we'll talk about later. Behind that, this is actually where your cigarette lighter, your 12 volt round plug would be. Um, however, it's kind of cool. He has actually swapped it out for this USB insert instead. So it's got two, three volt, looks like three volt USB ports in here and a little voltmeter to tell you, uh, you know, how much power is coming to it. That's really cool. Behind that's kind of interesting. You've got these two tabs. One says ashtray, one says cup holder. If we pull back ashtray, you get an ashtray. And um, that is a car guy's ashtray right there. We push that forward, pull back the cup holder, and suddenly you have a square place to put a cup. Need the ashtray? Oh, pull that back or just cover it up. Behind that, your power windows are actually mounted here in the center, uh, much like the uh, 04 SSR I reviewed. That's kind of neat. So they just kind of sit here and you're up and down, up and down, right here at the touch of your fingers. They're not mounted on the door. You always know where they are. They're right next to your manual parking brake. Hello. Behind that, we get a center console storage area. Not very big, but they really weren't in the 90s. So, you know, it's not a big deal. Over here at the passenger side, you get a glove box, which is uh, kind of interesting that it slides out. I don't think I've ever seen a it's less of a glove box and more of a glove drawer, really. That's kind of interesting. Uh, speakers are located down here in the footwells. Those are obviously not factory, but that's where they are located. Again, not in the door, which kind of interesting. It takes a lot of stuff out of the door. You still have your, all your power options, your power locks, your power windows. Um, your mirrors are not power, however. These, much like in my old Dakota, are joysticks. So you just move this joystick up, down, all around, and move your mirror exactly where you want it to go. No power things to fail, and uh, no having to push the mirrors manually up above again this is the 90s there's not much there you do have a couple of map lights or reading lamps whatever you want to call them and a little bit of storage up here as well you can use saying hide and slide things up there if you want to now up above you do have a weak point of the car the your sun visors apparently these are having inner cardboard and it's known to fail all the time so that's why it's kind of flappy um, but these are kind of interesting is that they you do have a mirror on both sides which uh, again you know some cars do that some cars don't but they have the feature that I love, and once again, I wish all cars employed, and that is the sun visor extenders that come back from out from each one to block the sun in between the visors. Why all car companies don't do that, I do not know. Now, we do have a back seat in your Beretta. Um, it's not much to look at. It's a 90s back seat in a coupe. It's not extremely large, but you can probably put your kids in here until they hit middle or high school and can no longer fit. Uh, pull this down. You do have a center armrest, but no cup holders because uh, you don't need amenities in a car like this. Not in the rear anyway. Now let's go check out the trunk. To do that, we hit the button and pull the trunk open. Now, I do love the underside of the trunk here. This custom GTZ mat. Uh, this is not factory. Apparently, he found this at a swap meet somewhere somebody made, but that's really cool. I think that that's a great touch to this car. Otherwise, it's a Beretta trunk. It's pretty, I mean, it's got space for stuff. You can definitely get some stuff in here. You can take you, the wife, and maybe the kid on vacation in this thing if you were wanting to drive a Beretta on vacation. But yeah, I mean, you can definitely do that. Not much to see back here. He's got a cargo net in here. It has places to attach it. Not much, but definitely had to get a shot of the uh, underside of the trunk lid because that's really cool. And close that back down. Now, the thing we notice about this trunk lid is that you have to lift things kind of high to get things in there. It doesn't go all the way down to the bumper like a lot of modern trunks do. But still, you close it and you, and you get these smoked out taillights. It just runs seamlessly across with the black part of the trunk. That's a really good looking car. 
All right, let's get up front and talk about the business end of this vehicle. Now, under the hood of your GTZ, you had two engine options. One, you had this, which is your 2.3 liter quad four, four cylinder engine. Quad being 16 valves, I had to ask because I'd never heard that term actually. Now, if you can see this W41 designation on the, uh, the valve cover here, this is actually an Oldsmobile developed engine uh, back around this time. Pretty much it just added power with upgraded camshafts and of course a computer tune, which yes, was still a possible thing even in the early 90s. Um, and this vehicle has that, it's got the cams in it, which is you know what helps to give it its power. 180 horsepower from the factory. Now this one's been modified slightly with a tune, exhaust and uh, intake and whatnot, up to about 200 horses, which not a big jump, but you know, for early 90s and a little Chevy coupe, not too bad. Now this one is once again mated to the five-speed manual transmission, which is the one you want. You could have gotten a three-speed automatic. I mentioned earlier it was a four-speed, but they weren't making those yet until 94. But this is hooked up to the five-speed manual, which is the one you want. Zero to 60, according to Motor Week at the time, was about seven and a half seconds. If you opted for the 3.1 liter V6, you could only get it at this time with three-speed automatic transmission, which absolutely killed your zero to 60. You were talking about nine seconds at that point, which raises that age old question again. Why do we put the bigger motor in and take away the fun transmission option? I, I don't understand that. I uh, see this brace, the strut tire brace running across here. This is not actually a factory Beretta piece, but it is General Motors. This actually comes from the Cavaliers of the time. Now I did mention this car does have a few mods because well, the guy owns it and it's his baby. So of course he's going to modify it. Uh, so we're going to Talk about those real quick, just in all fairness. So this thing does have Coney adjustable shocks on the front, which is, I'm assuming all four corners, um, which is really cool. So here's your here's your little knob to, to do that. It's kind of cool. You just set that on there and turn it. it has a Willwood brake setup here on the front, which kind of cool. You know, I, I've only ever seen Willwoods online. So it's, <laughs> to actually see a set in person. That's interesting. And these wheels, these raised wheels, actually, he had to source these from a guy in Russia because the factory wheels would not clear these rotors. And of course, we all know when you do brake modifications on cars, sometimes you can't find things that fit or they just don't make things. And that was the case with this. These are actually Dodge Neon SRT4 rear brakes that just, with a little bit of modification, fit right on this car. And from what he told me, modifying this car is a challenge because they don't make things for it. You have to do everything custom. So any modifications done to one of these cars is definitely special because someone put a lot of time and a lot of thought and a lot of work into making that happen. Now, while I'm back outside the car, there are actually some exterior features that are specific to your GTZ Z26 and that type of thing. Your normal Beretta actually had what they called the egg crate grill right here where this cover is pretty much. Your GTZ gets all of its air from underneath. And if you were to stick your hand up in there, you'd feel it kind of curves up towards the radiator. Kind of like the fourth gen Camaro of the time had, where you couldn't see a grill, but it still made its way to the radiator. Your bumper here, GTZ specific, as well as the markers and fogs down here. Coming down the side, the side skirts are also specific, as was your rear bumper. This is not a standard GTZ bumper, that, or this is not a standard Beretta bumper. This is GTZ Z26 specific. All right, now that that part's done, let's uh, let's see what this thing drives like because it's supposed to be pretty fun. About to leave out, but of course you can't shoot a 90s General Motors vehicle in the in 2022 without showing off the keys. So your square key for your ignition and only your ignition, and then your round key for your doors and trunk. All your GM cars in the 80s and 90s had this. My 95 Camaro had the same thing. That's how I knew to just grab the square key to start it. It does have a custom exhaust on this thing. I don't know if we can hear. Doesn't sound too bad at all. Almost forgot I was mounted up on the window. Now you'll have to excuse if it starts to look like I don't know how to drive a manual because he does have an aftermarket stage three Kevlar clutch in this thing and it can be a little grabby. I'm definitely not used to performance clutches. Yep, that's a GM signal switch. Mm -hmm. So your GM signal switch, just like all of them from this times, feel cheap and like they're gonna break every time you use them, but they don't break. Take it easy at first. Oh wow, yeah, it is. Uh, that is something to get used to. Okay, so you gotta be quick between the gas and the clutch. Let's put it in a second and do a launch here. 
do a pull. Now this thing doesn't come into its power until the higher RPM's close to red line. And you definitely gotta shift kinda quick with it. But yeah, man, this thing, wow, this thing is actually really fun to drive, and it is a quick car. Okay, now coming up on a curve, let's see how this thing does. Now, these things supposedly handle them pretty great from the factory. And with this these upgraded suspension, yeah, this thing does pretty good. Oh, yeah, it feels nice. I mean, obviously, it's not perfect. It's, you know, it's not a Ferrari or something, but... You're not going to expect that out of a 90 Chevy car. But still, yeah, this thing's fun. I'm climbing this curvy hill in third gear, and this thing just wants to keep on eating. Oh, here's a nice straight. It is uphill, so it's a bit of a hill climb. But I'm still in third gear, and this thing's still got so much more range. Apparently, these motors will rev to 8,000. No problem. Six. I think I got used to that clutch finally. That is insane. And just keep on eating. Alright, now. <laughs> definitely a hard turn, which it still does not mind at all. And that was definitely over 90 degrees. This thing is. Short to me to punch it from first, so let's figure it out. First, get this thing rolling. Yeah. Show us how to really drive this thing. 
Third to second pull again. Yeah, all right. Ready. gonna do it for this uh 93 beretta gtz this thing is wild i i still cannot believe that this thing is a 1993 chevy beretta obviously it's not just a base beretta it's, the gtz is definitely something special and with some modifications and they're not even crazy modifications but they're definitely what you need to drive this thing spiritedly uh, which is what it's definitely meant for what a car i mean uh, this thing is an absolute blast to drive and I may need one of these. <laughs> Apparently, there is a huge following for these Berettas. They came in all different shapes, and well not shapes, but different varieties. I can't even remember all of them. I know you got the GTZ, the Z26, you had the, the Indy Pace Car Edition, which is kind of cool. I'll have to throw some pictures up there, up there of that. And then, now the GTZ is absolutely not, probably not the craziest one they made, but still, it's crazy. And this thing is great. Anyway, I think I've said crazy enough. I think I've gushed about this thing enough. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this car. And if you didn't know what a Beretta GTZ is or if the Chevrolet even made a fun Beretta, well, now you know, and so do I. <laughs> Anyways, if you guys like what you see here, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give me a follow over there on Facebook and Instagram at that car vlog channel. It's another great way to get notified of uh, when a new video goes live. Also, if you happen to have anything you'd be willing to let me review and drive on the channel, check the link in the description below two of them actually one to a list of cars i'd be interested in right off the top of my head anyway also my email address will be down there for you to send any offers to um huge thanks again to brian um i never thought a cars and coffee video would turn into <laughs> driving this crazy thing but i guess anything's possible uh thanks here for letting me drive this thing this is absolutely crazy anyway thank you guys so much for watching you have a good one